We're with you till 8 this evening. It's a real honor for me. It's one of those shows where you get excited and run down to the studio because I've got a great guest coming up. A lot of people excited to hear from him. He has a brand new single, a hit single a lot of people are talking about, and it's perfectly timed for the upcoming presidential election. The song is called America. He is the famed musician, producer for his own music, and he is also one of the founders in the Minneapolis Music Sound. He has produced the likes of Jody Watley, Adam Ant, Tom Jones, and more. His name is Andre Simone, and we welcome Andre Simone again to the Upper Room with Joe Kelly. How you doing, Andre? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing fine, and, and you're you're out in L.A. making music. I, I'm sure you've been making music all along, but time to, to let some of that out, and people are, are really excited about this. Let's talk about uh, why you decided to, to break out some of that new music now and the new single, America. You know, it, it's mostly because I think that it's just a great time. You know, I mean, we, you know, I think we're in the, you know, this is the most important election, I think, of our lifetime right now. And I really, really think we have a great president. And I think that he's our best hope to really move this country in the right direction. And, you know, I mean, there's a lot of artists that are out there. And, and it seems like now people are starting to come together. But, you know, for a while it didn't seem like anybody was stepping up doing, um, you know, kind of representing, you know, the music re- uh, aspect of this. And so I just thought, you know what, you know, I'm, I was already working on an album anyway. Mm-hmm. And I, I had written the song America. And I thought it would be great to take that song and, and, you know, put it out there. And, you know, all the proceeds are going to the Obama re-election campaign. And, um, you know, just try to, you know, even if I can get, you know, one, two, a thousand, five hundred people, you know, to get behind it and get out there and vote, you know, I'd be doing my part. Now, now where's the best spot people can go to uh, to purchase the track and, and hear more about the, the music and what you've been doing? Well, you can go to andresalone.bandcamp.com. That's, that's you know, probably the best place. And then, you know, it's on iTunes and Amazon, but that's probably the best place to go. And then, you know, it's just a dollar donation, you know, whatever you want to donate. But, you know, all the proceeds go to his re-election campaign. And, and it's funny, Andre, right now as we do this interview live here in Fairfield, Connecticut, right outside the see-through booth here at the studio, they have a uh, White House photographer doing a presentation to uh, the students and pictures of his you know, uh, documents all through the years at the White House. So it's pretty cool. Nice time. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. yeah. Um, let, let's talk about the song America. And uh, are you playing everything on it yourself or you brought some more people in? Oh, no, no. I'm playing, you know, I, you know doing this record, I just, you know, decided, you know, I mean, this is one of those times because music is going in such a strange direction. Mm-hmm. That's another reason why I decided to just, you know, you know, get back out there because nobody's really, doing music, well, I shouldn't say nobody, there's definitely some people out there, Roots and some other groups are really out there, you know, and they've been out there for a while. But, you know, I mean, just representing sort of the rock and roll attitude of music. And I just thought that that's something that needs to be really reflected right now with, with the climate of music. And that kind of, you know, is, is probably why I decided to get out there. And, you know, I mean, I'm just, I've been playing a lot and, you know, I mean, really just playing acoustic guitar and singing a lot, but after that, I just decided I'm going to put a band together. So I put a live band together, and, and I recorded this record. And America is one, of the, you know, is one of the songs from this from the recordings. What's it like recruiting a, a new band? And any difference from from the days of woodshedding back in Minneapolis uh, as current musicians? What do, what do you see? Any any changes? You know, yeah, definitely. Because you know, the way I went about this record was a little interesting. Because you know, obviously, people knew me from you know, from back in the day and all the different stuff that I did with Prince and, you know, different artists and things like that. You know, and so they expected me to be, you know, I guess, you know, coming from that whole, you know, still, re- you know, pulling that sound out of the, out of the closet or out of the arsenal or whatever, however you, you put it. But when they heard where I was coming from, you know, because every time I, you know, brought somebody on board, all that did was sit there and I'd play the song. I'd just say, this is the song that I want you to play on. And, uh, and I just played them about, you know, 10, 11, 12 songs. You know, they just sat there and listened to all the songs, and they were like, I'm down. And, mm-hmm. you know, so I just approached it all like that, just totally organic, totally acoustic, and totally a performance, so they could totally hear where I was coming from without any, you know, you know, just raw, you know? 
Uh, we've got the song ready to go, um, America, which we've been talking about here. Andre Simone. Andre Simone is with us, and uh, we're going to talk about upcoming uh, projects and maybe dip a little bit in the past. A lot of people are excited that Andre is on the show. And uh, like you said, you can go to andresimone.bandcamp.com, and uh, we're going to play America right now. Andre Simone right here on WVOF in the Upper Room. Yeah, that's a great new single from Mr. Andre Simone, America. And uh, although we are not affiliated, our views, our station, with uh, anything Andre saying or I'm saying tonight, I think people know where I, my beliefs uh, kind of lay in tune and probably along the lines of uh, Andre. So, uh, but for, for uh, equal time, we can't uh, say the station has those views. But uh, Andre, uh, that new single, andresimone.bandcamp.com, all the money going into Barack Obama's campaign. And, you know, you, you watched the first debate, I'm, I'm sure, or part of it. Uh, what's your feeling going into tomorrow night? No, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I think a lot of people say that, you know, Barack Obama lost that debate. And, it, and it's an interesting thing because, you know, I, mean, I got young kids. You know, I got, you know, um, twin five-year-old girls and a, a six-year-old boy. And, I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, I'm thinking for them, you know, the message should be truthfulness and telling the truth. And, you know, I don't know that it's a good message to send when somebody can bend the truth and people say you won. So I, I just, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, hopefully some of that being um, challenged, rectified, and, and, you know, straightened out this, this tomorrow. Yeah, I was doing uh, some reading, and uh, they mentioned you're a news junkie. Um, how do you get your news uh, specifically, and, you know, what do you usually gravitate towards? You know, a lot of things. I, you know, I, you know, I, you know, follow a couple of people's Twitter, you know, feeds and some blogs, and you know, I, you know, I kind of watch a lot of news. I watch a lot of MSNBC, um, a lot of CNN. Sometimes I, you know, if I want to just see just how twisted people can get, I watch Fox. But <laughs> if I, if I want to see how to just how far down the rabbit hole they can go, <laughs> I'm sorry, right. but it's just you know, I mean, because it's amazing how they how they are able to get people to vote against their own best interests. I mean, that makes absolutely no sense how, you know, they twist things around so much. Because for me, it's really cut and dry. You know, one, one, you know, side, you know, the Democrats, are basically people, down for the people. They're, from, they're who you are. They're who I am. And, you know, you know, for the people. The other side are pretty much for corporations. It's really simple. And, you know, the, the unfortunate thing, and I, you know, I don't want to get too, you know, too preachy about all of this, but, you know, the unfortunate thing is, and that's why this, this, this election is so important, because, you know, there's a lot of things that if, you know, Mitt Romney becomes president of the United States, you know, God forbid, um, that, you know, there's a lot of pollution, a lot of, you know, environmental things that are going to go completely the wrong direction. There's a lot of gains that we've made that completely will be reversed, you know, as far as it, it has to do with women's reproductive rights and things of that nature. So I really, it's so important that, you know, we continue on this forward progress. You know, and um, one of the other things that I think, you know, I think is really important to, to talk about from my perspective is, you know, I think after school programs, like um, some of the programs that I was able to get involved with, you know, in Minneapolis, you know, really helped me. It helped artists, you know, that I grew up working with, like Prince and Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and Morris and all the guys that came through that whole, you know, from Minneapolis. And we were all invo involved in after-school programs and music programs and things like that. And those are all kinds of programs that Republicans have cut and gutted mm -hmm. and are going to do even more of if they if they get in power. They're going to cut all that stuff. They're trying to cut, you know, um, athletic programs. Anything that somebody from the inner city could use to get out of their circumstances, you know, and to get, you know, to be able to get, you know, in a place where they could actually, you know, maybe make the kind of money some of those guys are making, they shut those things down. Mm -hmm. So that just goes to show that those people don't have your back. You know, people who are trying to put programs like that in place and give people like, you know, you know young kids that are coming up right now that have a dream. You know, that's what you talk about the American dream. That's what the American dream is all about, having an opportunity to be able to get to that American dream. You know, Republicans are about trying to stop.
stop that opportunity, trying to close that opportunity and shut that opportunity down so people can stay in their place. And our place is to realize the American dream. Our place is to reach your full potential. And that's what I'm all about. And that's what, you know, I sing about. That's what the bulk of my album is about. Um, if I could become you know, the kind of art, artist with people's help, you know, because it, it takes the people, the power of the people to help artists like myself do the things that I want to do these days. Because now, you know, uh, record companies, are, they're in a whole other place now. Now it's in the hands of, of the people mm-hmm. to give, you know, uh, somebody like me the power. I would just do music that would heal, that would help people and, and help the cause and help the world. You know, I think about how people got behind Trayvon Martin, you know, which I thought was a beautiful thing. You know, people came together and they, they made, they brought that man to justice. And they, it just shows the power of the people when you get together and unite. And I would love to see that happen, you know, with this little girl who, who was shot in Afghanistan. If we could take that same power and spread it around the world, you know, because now we're all connected. Now we are actually a human family. If I can take, see that power spread around the world and those, that same attitude, you know, go out and say, you know what, that's just as wrong and I'm just as outraged about that. And just to have people, you know, gather around and step up and, and, and do the same thing all around the world, we could see a major change in this whole world. And, and that's kind of what I'm all about. And that's, you know, kind of what my music is geared toward. And I think anytime there's a cause, I mean, anytime I think there's some injustice, that's what I'm bringing my voice back for. And that's what I'm going to spend, you know, my energy, my time, and I'm going to, you know, push my music in that direction. Yeah, it's well said. My special guest right now, Andre Simone, and uh, he's got a brand new single called America. You can go to uh, andresimone.bandcamp.com and uh, get that single. We're going to uh, revisit from, uh, actually, this is from your first solo record, Kelly's Eyes, always one of my favorite from the record. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll come back and speak once again with Andre Simone, touch on those Minneapolis days growing up and... and uh, also, many things more. Andre Simone is with us live here at WVOF. This interview will be archived on our website, upperroomwithjoekelly.com, uh, later in the week, and uh, you can listen at your leisure. Tell a friend if uh, you just joined in. Uh, this is Andre Simone, Kelly's Eyes, right here on WVOF in the Upper Room, 8.5 FM. And Andre Simone is with us, and that was uh, some of that great songs from the solo record Kelly's Eyes and Andre you want to clarify something uh, before we get into p- some more other uh, talk right? Yeah I just wanted to uh, just make sure that because I think I said um, uh, Pakistan mm-hmm. I, I think I said Afghanistan I meant to say Pakistan Okay. So the little girl that got shot was from Pakistan was from Afghanistan right so right. You know, anyway um, yeah yeah as uh, a lot of our listeners know and, and if you don't know Andre Simone uh, one of the key figures in the Minneapolis music scene from, from way back and, and still goes back and, and uh, plays out there. And uh, you were born out on the Twin Cities, right? Yeah. Yep, yeah. In Minneapolis. Yeah. So, so, so uh, let's talk about some of the, the, the early days. I know your mom uh, was very influential in your upbringing and your dad was a musician. I, I, I was reading. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, you know, I mean, uh, it depends on how, you know, how, how deep you want to get into it. Cause I mean, um, let's see, I guess, you know, one of the things that I, I guess my mom had a lot to do with me really kind of, you know, getting as deeply involved in music as I got, you know, cause she was, um, my mom was, you know, had kids really, really early. I think she was like 15 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, she had to, you know, she went back to school after having kids and she was, you know, kind of doing, you know, basically she was like, you know, the movie to help. Right, my mom right. Was kind of, my mom was one of those women. She uh-huh. Definitely, she worked for a, a Jewish family, you know, when I was a kid. And uh, she went back to school, got an education. She moved our family from, um, you know, from from basically the projects to an upper middle class black neighborhood. And uh, you know, I didn't know anybody when we got there, and I felt like a fish out of water. And I was like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> weird. yeah. And uh, I remember the first day of school. You know, I was going. I, went to the school called Lincoln, which was interesting because I just didn't know anybody. And, you know, they did the roll call thing and they said, you know, all right, no, go stand against the wall. And I was like, okay. And I looked, you know, at all these people and I was like, wow, these are interesting people, and especially coming from where I came from because uh-huh. you know, I was basically coming more or less from Thug Central. So 
So I was like, okay. Hmm. And I looked down the line. I saw this one little kid, and I said, let me go stand next to him. I went and stood next to him. I said, hey, you know, my name is Andre. What's your name? He said, my name is Bruce. I said, nice to meet you, man. What are you into? He said, I'm into music. I said, that's interesting. So am I. I said, what do you play? He said, piano and guitar. I said, oh, cool. I played drums and bass. and You know, I was playing horns at the time. And he said, well, we should get together and jam. And I said, cool. And so we went. Um, his dad had a little one-bedroom apartment. Mm-hmm. You know, we went over there and started jamming. And, you know, I mean, a dude started playing the piano. And I was like, whoa, you can play. He's playing like Man from Uncle and, you know. Peanuts theme song. Right, <laughs> right. Like, and I was like, you know, I was like, you got to show me some of that. So I was kind of playing a little bit. But the interesting thing is, I looked on his dad's piano, and there was a bunch of pictures up there. Uh-huh. And I was like, wow, that guy looks familiar. I said, if I didn't know better, I'd think that that was my dad. And he said, well, you know what? My dad's going to be home in a minute. You know, when he comes home, why don't you just ask him? And I said, oh, dad came home, and first his dad was looking like, who's this, you know, who's this in, in my house? You know, and, right, and, right. And uh, his dad introduced me and everything. And, and I said, excuse me, but who's that guy in the picture? And he looked at the picture, and he looked at me, and he looked at the picture, and he just started laughing. And I was like, why is he laughing? <laughs> you know? right. And he was like, and then he said, you know, you're Fred's son. And I was like, wow. I said, you know my dad? He said, yeah, we played in a band, and, you know, I know your dad real well. And he said, you guys used to hang out together. You guys grew up together, basically, when you was kids. And it turns out that, you know, I didn't know it, but I just randomly picked somebody that, you know, I grew up with. Wow. So, yep. yeah, it wound up being a total coincidence. So yeah. that's kind of where that, that you know, came from. Um, you guys growing up in the, the Twin Cities as, as teenagers and everything, what, what were you guys listening to, and uh, how, how did you guys move into trying to make this uh, professional thing work? You know, I mean, at that point in time, Minneapolis was a very interesting place because if you, if you wasn't in a band, you weren't cool. Uh-huh. If you, you know, if you couldn't play an instrument, you know, it's just, you know, it, it was either... Then he was hustling. <laughs> so it, was, it was an interesting. It was an interesting time, and it was an interesting place. But um, you know, my mom, you know, she let us practice, and um, you know, like I said, I was kind of, you know, one foot in, one foot out of, you know, kind of, you know, where I grew up, and so, um, you know, I wound up, you know, pulling up to Prince's house in a brand new car, and you know, I was like maybe fourteen, and his mom was like, "Where'd you get that car from?" And I had a hard time explaining, <laughs> so she didn't want him hanging around with me anymore. Uh-huh. So, you know, and so that's kind of how we really got kind of tight because you know when she, you know, stopped him from being able to kind of hang out, mm-hmm. you know, he came and stayed with us for a while, and um, you know, and, and spent a few years at you know at my mom's house and lived with our family, and so we were able to really kind of you know woodshed, and, you know, put the band, you know, really get the band together and practice, and we just wound up playing around the city. And that's pretty much how, you know, as kids we, we came up. And then, you know. So, just, so, so let, me, know. let me stop you real quickly about, the, is this a myth or a real thing that when you guys were, like, sharing, sharing a room, Prince, or there was a line drawn or something? Where <laughs> Is that a yeah. true story growing up? You, you know, actually, it, it was a true story. We, when he first came and stayed with us, you know, we stayed in the same room. And uh-huh. That was really, really hard because, you know, I mean, he's a, He's a pretty, you know, he was a pretty organized individual at that time. Mm -hmm. Me, on the other hand, I was like all over the map. I was like, you know, I mean, I was into all kinds of stuff. And, you know, I think he was just, you know, came from a different place. And I was used to a, you know, a certain amount of freedom. And so we just divided the room. Oh, okay, yeah. And then eventually he wound up, you know, having the whole basement. I wound up having the whole attic. And it was great because, you know, he'd write a song, I'd come and listen to it, and I'd be, oh, yeah, man, that's, that's amazing. I write a song, he'd come, man, I love that. And, you know, we'd go back and forth. It became a really, you know, we were just tight like that. And then you guys went on and, and uh, doing stuff with Peppy Willie, right? And then uh, yeah. getting off. That in. came a lot. Yeah. That came a lot later, but yeah, yeah right. definitely. Yeah. Now, now uh, when you guys were in those formative years, you know, yourself, you mentioned Jimmy and Terry and, and Prince and and Morris Day, but uh, did you have any sense why you're in the midst of that? I, I've asked this to guys from P-Funk and people who are really influential in, in music history. Did you guys think that, hey, we're really going to be doing something, or you just trying well, to... you know, I, I can't speak for anybody else, but I know for myself, 
you know, when I was even, you know, when I was living in the projects, when I was like, you know, nine, ten, maybe even younger than that, eight, because, you know, I was always performing. I was doing talent shows back then. And anybody that would listen to me, I would tell them, man, I'm going to be the, the baddest, whatever, you know. And I would say, Michael Jackson, Jackson, I ain't nothing. And even though they were like unbelievable. I mean, Michael Jackson to this day is the most unbelievable, talented individual I've ever seen sing, dance, you know, and perform. But at the time, I just, you know, that's just, I just, there was no doubt in my mind that one day I was going to be, you know, up there on the world stage doing whatever. And, you know, we put our band together. I was like, man, we're going to be the baddest band and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, we had, you know, uh, Morris's mom was our manager. She had gotten Isaac Hayes to, you know, he had heard our, our demo tape and he was going to sign us to a deal and told us we were, we were going to have tutors. I quit school, you know, I mean, thinking that, you know, I was going to have a tutor and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, Next thing I read, I read in Jet that I the case was bankrupt, and you know I had to go get back in school. All right. <laughs> had to make up make up for them right. lost months. Right. But, no, yeah, it was you know it was it was a blast though. I gotta say. Uh, we're gonna we're getting some music, and and this is uh just. You know, th- this song just my my wife loves this song from from years back, and as well as I do, and and the video's cool. Andre Simone and, and Prince, the dance electric, and uh, what you know, the video's cool because uh. You remember Louis from uh, Soul Train, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. he's in there making making the appearance, and, and Louis still yeah. doing his thing out your way. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah. He's cool. So so, uh, give us a brief synopsis about uh, this track getting together and uh, all these years. Uh, and, and have you heard Prince? I think Prince even did something in tour rehearsal with this song too. I heard. Recently, yeah. Recently, he, yeah. Yeah, he he played in Chicago, and I heard he just completely tore it up. Uh huh. Um, and I, you know, I think my sister was at the show, and she said he, he gave me a little shout out, which I really appreciate. Um, you know, the song came together. He, he had, you know, it had, you know, basically a lot of success doing, you know, I think Purple Rain and doing the Time and Vanity and, you know, all the different groups. And you know, I was completely detached from all of that. I was doing my little sort of, you know, space, you know, live, new wave kind of thing, just trying to do something that was totally different than all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, you know, he wanted to just you know, reach out and, and, and maybe do something together. And, you know, I thought, okay, cool. You know, and uh, so when he called, he said, let's, you know, let's do this thing. I was like, okay, let's do it. We want to do a dance election. Yeah, this is a really powerful song from uh, Andre Simone. And I got to say, I, I got the 12-inch record because I bought the 12-inch record when it was out. Red Light, another great song. Mm-hmm. When, when the B-sides were, were really good stuff back then. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. This is uh, Andre Simone. Andre Simone is with us here at WVOF 88.5 in Fairfield. Those musicians who grew up there and made the music like Andre Simone and Prince and the time and everything, they say there's a certain way they funk in many. Yeah, it's a whole different kind of, a whole different kind of funk. But, you know, I mean, I, I think it comes from, and, and just in all honesty, it comes from, you know, from, some of the you know people that used to funk back in the day, like what you was playing earlier, mm-hmm. Parliament Funkadelic, George Clinton, right. the Fly and the Family Stone, um, the Ohio Players. You know a lot of those groups are groups we used to do. Stevie Wonder. I mean, you know, it's a, a combination of all of that. Because I mean, you know, we used to be basically kind of a cover band, except we didn't cover like um, you know like some bands that were you know doing doing gigs in the city at the time. Because literally, we were like you know. 14, 15, we were doing that stuff. Wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, we were really, really young doing it. In fact, we would play strip clubs, and our moms had to be there, you know, as chaperones in order for us to play some of these clubs. That, 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 must, have been a, that must have been interesting car, car ride conversations, right? <laughs> it was. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, basically they had to, you know, because we were always looking under the curtain. Uh-huh. And they were like, come on, guys. You know, it's like, it's really, it was really, I mean, when I think back on some of that stuff, because, you know, it was really, really an unbelievable time, you know, just, I mean, we had so much fun growing up doing, being able to play music in some of those places. Um, you know, you, you talked, uh, we were talking offline about, you know, New York, and, and you still come out to New York uh, uh, often and, and do things out here, but, you know, one of the stories you were mentioning, uh, you were on tour, and, and the, the night John Lennon died right out here, and how it affected you, and what was that, what yeah. was that like? You know, it was a trip because we we played at the bottom line, and um, 
I remember I was a little under the weather and I wasn't feeling good, but on my, I think I was on my way to the hotel. And I'm a big Beatles fan, definitely a big John Lennon fan. And I was walking past the, the Dakota. And, you know, my manager was like, yeah, this is where John Lennon is. And I, was, I remember going by and there's people standing around, standing outside and everything. I was like, wow. And you know, I stood around for a while, but then, you know, I went back to the hotel and, you know, like I said, I was under the weather. And so I was just, you know, crashing, trying to get some sleep. Because I think either we had just did the show or we were getting ready to do the show that night or something. And, um, and then I, I, the news was on and I heard this guy come on and he was like completely just, you know, you know, discombobulated, and it was just frantic, and he was like, you know, before he even said, he's like, I can't believe it, I can't believe it, and I was like, you know, I thought I was dreaming, he said, John Lennon's been shot, and I, I was like, what? Uh-huh. And I think I called Prince, I was like, no, you gotta, you know, turn on the news, turn on the news, I mean, it was crazy, and so, yeah, that was when we were, you know, and the, the trick about that was like, you know, we were like, I mean, it was so, it was such an amazing gig in New York, because I mean, everybody was there. I mean, uh, people from Kiss, you know. I mean, I mean the group Kiss, like Gene Simmons, and you know all the makeup and all that. Uh-huh. I mean, and you know, for us coming from Minneapolis to see people like that, and then Chic, you know, the um, the group Chic. Oh yeah, you know, now Rogers, Rogers, he lives right down yeah. the road from here. Yeah. Yeah, they were all there. You know, in fact, we wound up hanging out with with um, the girls from Chic. I, I, I probably should even be saying this. But we wound up hanging out afterwards, just just kicking it and, and hanging out, man. We just, we just, it was just a great, it was a great time, and it was unbelievable seeing people, you know, that we respected in the music business that were out there in the audience coming to this show because they, had, you know, heard about what we were trying to do and. You know. yeah. uh, our special guest right now is Mr. Andre Simone, and uh, he has a brand new single, and and it's uh, just recently released. It's called America. And uh, you can uh, go and download it, and the money that uh, you pay for it will be donated to the, the campaign of Barack Obama. And uh, you have gotten, uh, Huffington posted a nice write-up on you that that was uh, recent. I saw that online. Thank you. Yeah, they did, they did a great job. We're, we're trying to get it out to as many people as we can, and I really appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to reach some people and to get the word out. Uh we, uh, you know, we were talking. Uh, I told Andre that uh, you, you actually were the first musician I, I ever interviewed uh, 30 years ago, um, back when I was on WNAB, and you were on tour in New York doing a solo tour. Um, mm-hmm. But I can remember that day, Owen Husney, your, your former manager, calling up and saying, "Are you ready to do the interview?" And I, you know, I was some nervous 19-year-old guy and wow. ran over to the studio and recorded it. Uh, but you, you said those days are like like yesterday, right? For you, for yeah, yourself. It's, it's- yeah, it seems like yesterday, man, because, you know, not a whole lot has really changed. You know, I mean, that's probably when I stopped, right around the time when I stopped doing music for myself, at least. You know, so it's kind of, I'm just sort of picking up where I left off. I mean, I stopped for a while to help other people sort of realize their thing, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, I, you know, I've been really blessed, you know, as far as music is concerned. and I've, I've been able to do just about anything I've wanted to, to do. I mean, you know, I played as a, as a kid and a unbelievable you know, local band and everybody you know in the city and our neighborhood was totally behind us totally backed us up and then you know obviously you know we we were able to get out of minneapolis and prince's whole thing kind of blew up well i was kind of there before it blew up i mean the first three albums were the things that i were the albums i was involved with right and so i was there when it was rough <laughs> right. you know when people you know we would we would go out in fact when we were open for rick james you know, people literally would be booing us and yelling, you know, screaming at us, calling us names. You know, I don't even want to repeat some of the names. They would be yelling at us for about the first three songs. Uh-huh. After about the third or fourth song, the yelling stopped. And they were like, um, these guys are good. <laughs> and about the fourth or fifth song, they were trying to climb on stage. Right, so right. So by the time we finished our set, you know, we had, we had won them over. And, you know, it was interesting because... You know, that let me know. That just showed me that the power of music and the power of persuasion, if you're really good at what you do and you're convicted, you know, I, I, I saw, I've seen how music can change and people can, can go from just totally being into one thing and getting into something else, you know? And that's why, you know, I, I feel so strongly about the album that I'm working on right now and the music that I'm doing because, you know, I'm really, 
you know, my heart and soul is into this. And I'm in a different place because, I mean, I think I was saying during the break, um, you know, now I can sit down. This is something that I couldn't do before. I can sit down, pull out my guitar, and play 12, 13, 14, 15 songs just like that. Right. You know, without really having to do anything. Just pick them up, play them. Don't need a band. If I have a band, that's great. But, you know, I can just go and do whatever I want. It's, there's a freedom in that. And there's an art in that that I just think is something that, you know, is rare these days, you know. And it's something that I want to embrace. And it's something that I want to give back, you know, for, you know, for all the blessings that I've been given and the gift that I've been given to even be able to do this. I think I owe it to, you know, to myself. And I owe it to, you know, I think people who are, you know, who love music to give that to them. So, so uh, let's talk musician talk because uh, we get a lot of musicians uh, checking out our show. What, what, uh, what are you playing uh, bass wise and how about guitar wise? What, what kind of things are you bringing into the studio? You know, I have, uh, I still have my bass from back in the day. You know, from you know all the you know all the pictures you see with me with the Prince thing and all that. That's my my jazz. I've had that since God, man. Um, since we had a local band, since mm-hmm. we were at Grand Central. I still have that, and I'm playing that on a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of the tracks on the song. I got some, some, ni- black nylon strings on it. That's the difference, and it sounds funky. Um, I have a Motion B, you know, a Yamaha Motion B. Um, you know, I have an Ibanez bass. You know, not a whole lot. I mean, because actually, I didn't play a lot of bass on on this particular record. I actually put a band together, mm-hmm. and so. Um, uh, the keyboard player, I'm, I was lucky to get these guys because they're really unbelievable. The keyboard player is out on tour right now with Madonna. His name is Ricky Peugeot. Okay. Unbelievable keyboard player. Um, you know, um, the bass player is out on, on tour with Macy Gray. The guitar player is out on tour with Rufus Wainwright. You know, um, you know, it's just, I just was blessed to get some really unbelievable musicians. So, you know, I, you know, I play bass as far as guitar is concerned, Epiphone. You know, um, Stratocaster, you know, I have a telly that I play on a couple of things. Um, oh, Gibson, I mean, I was, <laughs> again, I was lucky, you know, to get, there's a, um, a little place here, the Gibson um, uh, people allowed me to just use their, their guitars. They just, they have a, a little shop where, you know, musicians can come in town and, and you know, um, if you're doing something in the city, you know, you come down there and you talk to them and, you know, if, if what you're doing is something that they feel like they can get behind, they'll get behind it. And they, they allowed me to come in there and use some guitars and use some amps so we were able to use that stuff for the recording. And so all the sessions were live and it was just, you know, it was great. Yeah, we look forward to all that new music coming out and uh, we're, we're going to go back uh, in time just a bit and then come back and uh, wrap it up with talk about uh, the current stuff. But uh, people are such a, a fan, including myself, of some of the great production work you did uh, when you put your solo work a little bit to the side. But uh, mm-hmm. how was it? Uh, we're going to play something from Jody Watley, still a thrill, but um, mm-hmm. getting into uh, production mode, what, what's that like? And, of course, Jody Watley went on to big fame that, that you were an t- integral part of, of that. Uh, what was it like? working with all these great artists and, and putting your spin with them? You know, it was amazing. I mean, you know, I think Jody Wiley, for one thing, she's one of the most underrated singers out there. I mean, because she's got an unbelievably pure, clear, crisp voice. I mean, you hear it in some of the Shalimar uh, songs, you know, I mean, whenever you hear it, there's a distinctive sound. And I think her voice is, you know, is that sound, you know. Um, so, I mean, it was beautiful working with her. I think she's really talented and underrated. Um, I think, you know, obviously Adam and I is is just, I mean, that was, I think, the most fun I've ever had, you know, just recording and, and, and just doing music because he's just, him and his guitar player, I mean, they had me in stitches. Uh-huh. I had tears rolling out of my eyes most of the time while we were doing the recording. Where, where did you um, uh, record that record? We recorded here in L.A. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah. Tom Jones was, I mean, that, that dude is just, I mean, I'm, I've just been blessed because, you know, even working with him was just something that was surreal. I mean, it was surreal working with that guy. I mean, because he's Tom Jones, for one thing, you got, hey, Andre, 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 Andre,
thing was interesting because I wound up doing it when she was in Germany, mm-hmm. and I, I couldn't leave. I was supposed to. I couldn't leave the country because I was supposed to be working on my own album at the time, and I was. I just signed to MCA, and so they wouldn't allow me to, you know, to you know, to leave. They were like, I couldn't do it. So I had to produce her over the phone, which was unbelievable. So I had to go through, you know, the engineer and her and her manager and back to me, and it was that was a that was a strange one, but it was still fun, you know. Um, and then just you know, I mean, I've done a lot of other artists, and you know, I mean. Jermaine Stewart was fun. Yeah, uh, rest in peace on Jermaine, yeah. Yeah, he was really fun. He was a blast. Um, and, and, uh, a, this, and a great record. Uh, I interrupt you real quickly. Uh, the yeah. Girls, which I bought that record. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was, that was, that was, yeah. uh, that Minneapolis funk right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that was, you know, it's, you know, that was pre Janet Jackson. Uh huh. So, you know, there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of uh, interesting, you know, connections. Because, you know, I mean, you know, the girls were, I mean, that, those girls can sing, man. Mm-hmm. To this day, they still can sing. And, you know, I mean, that, that record probably should be re-released or somebody should do something with that. You know, um, some people reached out to me and asked me if I was interested. And I said, look, anything I can do to help you, because those girls are talented. Right, right. Um, yeah. So uh, let's get into this song right now. Jody Wiley, written and produced by my special guest right now and has been for the last hour. Mr. Andre Simone will come back and uh, talk one more segment with Andre. Uh, and definitely check out his uh, latest and greatest song, just a, a tip of the iceberg on what's going to be coming out from Andre. You can go to andresimone.bandcamp.com. The track is called America, and this is Jody Watley. Still a thrill right here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF. Of course, that is uh, Jody Watley, Still a Thrill. And uh, we were talking off air, Andre, and uh, said that was a funky track. Still is, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot how funky that track was. That's right, yeah. You, I mean... You've made some great records, um, produced great records, and uh, let, let's talk about. You know, we've got about, you know, about six minutes to go. We want to we want to play America again from Andre Simone, but uh, yeah, some of the some of the tours that you've done, both with uh, Prince and uh, solo tours, you have some memorable venues that uh, you love playing at. I'm I'm sure there's some ones you never want to revisit again, but yeah. You know, honestly, for the most part, it was pure fun. I mean. You know, there was a few things that got to be a little interesting on the tour because you know, I, you know, I'm one of those kind of people that really, really take what I do serious. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and when it comes to performing, when I go up there, I just, you know, I give it 100, and, you know, 80, 90, 100, 200 percent. You know, so a lot of times that would get, you know, um, get in the way. People would think that I was cocky, you know, because I'd come off stage and I wouldn't be wanting to chat and things like that. So, you know, the other bands would think, oh, you know, they think they're all cocky and blah, 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 blah. It wasn't even like that. So there was some things like that. But you know, other than that, it was just fun. It was just, you know, I mean, you know, there's lots of places we played that, that are memorable. I remember in, um, in Denver we did a gig that it was the first time we did a gig where, you know, we got mobbed. You know, and I, you know, I mean, I had had a little bit of that before, you know, um, but but not to this degree where you know we all we you know we got mobbed where it was like they were trying to tip the whole, um, the whole, uh, um, you know, I think our dressing room was in some kind of an RV or something, uh-huh. but they were, they were tipping it. They were like, I mean, I thought it was literally going to tip over. And so they had to get us out of there and, you know, they put us in, you know, in a limousine and, and then we raced and actually somebody got hit by the limousine and then there was like 10 cars following us. And then we got to an intersection and our, our tour manager j- jumped out and tried to, Stop one of the cars from you know from following us, and and the next thing I know, they take off with him half. They stick it out the window. <laughs> I mean, it was like it was insane. I was like, you know, I mean, and then it just that got to be kind of you know normal, right? You know, right. but that was like the first experience with all of that to that degree. Because we had you know obviously in Minneapolis we had a little bit of that, but it was just you know you know because we didn't you know we had you know maybe a few too many girlfriends. That, that you know you're playing in a little town and they're all waiting by the side of the stage and then you're trying to figure out your escape route. It's a little interesting, but you know it was all fun. I mean, music music is fun. Oh yeah. Ultimately, it's just a fun thing. And if you really love what you're doing and you really, you know, if, if you you know take the time and really learn what you're doing, it, it's just one of those things that's just rewarding. And you know, I think you make people happy, and that's what it's really all about. 
Uh, Andre Simone has been our guest. Uh, really always an honor to have Andre. And he's got a brand new record coming out. You, you're talking uh, sometime early next year, right? Yeah, first yeah. of the year it's going to be out, and uh, it's called The Stone. Oh, The Stone? Yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, that, that means you got to revisit because I, I can't – I can't wait another 30 years to have you on, you know. Wait, way oh. too much time in between. <laughs> no, no. We'll, we'll, no be doing, we'll both be nah. in, in, in nursing home mode in, in 30 years probably. I don't know. Speak for yourself. Bro. Oh, okay. No, I hope <laughs> yeah, right. I got yeah. a long way to go. Yeah. I got some, I got some, some little, little ones. Oh, yeah, that's that, right. Uh, they're I, chasing me around the orange tree right now. So. <laughs> I, I, I got a little dog. That, that's what keeps me going. So. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we got to remind people, um, Andre's newest single called America, getting a lot of great words, and, and we've been playing it since it came out. Uh, it's called America, and people can go right now to Andre Simone, A-N-D-R-E-C-Y-M-O-N-E dot bandcamp dot com. And uh, if you purchase it, uh, the money goes to uh, reelect. Barack Obama, and uh, I mentioned before, it's not affiliated with WVOF or, uh, you know, it's Andre's uh, choice, and uh, we, we commend him on that. And, and I got to say, anytime Jesse Johnson is in the White House playing guitar, <laughs> we, we got to keep a rock in the White House. There you go. There yeah, you go. Yeah, when I turned it on, I saw, saw Jesse That's playing right. there. That, that was something. So. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, hey, thanks again, brother. And, My pleasure, uh, man. I appreciate it. And uh, hold on. Uh, we're going to give people a listen of America by Andre Simone. If you missed out on this interview and want to hear it in its entirety, we'll be re-airing at Upper Room with JoeKelly.com in the archive section um, in a little while shortly uh, this week. So uh, thanks so much, Andre. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, America. Appreciate it,